Mm-hmm. And I, we can honestly dive into this here because I know we've talked about it off the pod. We talked about it earlier on the pod. Um, man, DeAndre Ayton looked horrible. <laughs> Man, DeAndre, bro, I don't know what to say about this guy, bro. Former number one overall pick. Like, he just, I don't know. I'm not a fan, to be honest. But DeAndre Aiden is just, he's just not it, bro. He's just not it. I, I know I talked about it last time with, you know, being at game two. You know, you see Chris Paul leave. As soon as he left, it felt like DeAndre Aiden's presence left the court, too, at the same time. Mm-hmm. or whatever of it was there to begin with, you know? So coming into this game, I was, you know, this is what I was expecting uh, because he just doesn't get, and some of it isn't all his fault, right? Like at the end of the day, he doesn't always get those touches. And obviously some of that is scheme. Like you feel like, you know, D book has you know so much time on the ball. Same thing with Kevin Durant um, that where, when, when is Aiden going to get a touch in the post, but at the same time, He's not rolling super hard to the rim. When he does, he's not finishing aggressively. I'm looking at him get stuffed by Jamal Murray. He's not, you know, these are opportunities that he has to dunk the ball, to finish strong, get in ones through contact. He's not doing it well. He's not rebounding well. He's not checking Jokic well. And, you know, throughout most of the the second and third quarter, um, you know, Monty Williams went to to Jock Dale off the bench. He played significantly better. It was much more scrappy. Um, you can even just see on, like, out-of-bounds plays, he's getting physical with Jokic, trying to get, you know, his body up into him um, and, and try to disrupt him any way that he can in ways that Aiton just is not. And that's just an effort thing at that point. Like, there's no – if you just look at athleticism and skill set, like, Aiton is miles ahead of Jock Landell in that department. Right. Like, in terms of just – that's just pure effort and just, you know, wanting to exert that – for 20, 25 minutes a game um, to give your team what you have to try to slow down a two-time MVP. Um, and I think the sequence in the fourth that really got eight and bench for the rest of this game um, was he blew a layup on, on Jamal Murray on one end, came down the other side of the court, uh, didn't get the rebound on the first one, got it tipped, got the rebound, and then immediately got it ripped, I think, by Aaron Gordon um, and lost the possession there for the Suns. Um, and then you can even hear on the broadcast, Richard Jefferson was like, and Jock Landale just got off the bench. My Monty Williams is like, I've seen enough. As just a fan, I've seen enough. Like, I know he had the whole contract dispute, you know, with being a restricted free agent. He had signed the deal in Indiana and the Suns matched. And so I'm, I'm sure there's still some animosity there. And we saw animosity, you know, in previous years between him and Monty Williams and, you know, some of the minutes that he played in the postseason. But look, man, like, at the end of the day, you're a part of this big core that they've, they've put together in Phoenix. And without Chris Paul, like, you would expect you've got to be able to step up and do more. And, if again, if like on a night like this when your offensive presence as a scorer could be helpful but, like, is not needed, like, you need to be able to shine in other areas. You need to be fighting for rebounds. You need to be making an impact on the defensive end. And you're not doing that, like, at all. Right. Um, so I, I think I tweeted out, I genuinely would not be shocked um, if he got benched. Like, if I'm Monty Williams, that's something I would seriously consider. Um, because, again, like I said, you don't need him to put up a ton of points. Again, it would be helpful, but, you know, it feels like we're scratching and clawing for him to put up any points at all. And so um, that coupled with, him being a negative right now in terms of rebounding in the defensive end, I would much rather if I'm the Suns coach play Jock Landale more minutes, get him up to like 30 minutes a game. Obviously you're still going to bring in DeAndre and potentially, um, you know, Bismack as well. Um, you know, if people get into foul trouble, but um, I think he found something in those minutes there with Jock and I'd expect to see more and potentially move him into the starting lineup because what Aiden is doing right now is not going to cut it. My biggest problem with DeAndre Ayton, like you said, it's not the fact that you're not scoring. It's not the fact that – I mean, it's bad that you're missing open layups. It's bad that you're not being aggressive on the offensive end. But like you said, it's the it's the fact that you're not doing the stuff that I need my big man to do. A lot of the dirty work as far as rebounding, hustling, defending. Like, I understand you're not going to stop Jokic. Like, no one's going to stop Jokic. But I, it just seems like you're out there. You're just a liability. Like, you're not even really trying. Mm-hmm. Like, when, when you don't have – we don't get the post touches as a big man. 
the only way you're going to get the touches is if you go get it. If you go get those offensive rebounds, if you go get those rebounds, like they will reward you. Every every big man that hustles, that gets the offensive rebounds, that does all the dirty work, eventually you will get rewarded. And especially on this team where we only really have two scores, basically. Like if you do all the dirty work, I'm pretty sure you will get rewarded on the offensive end. So that's my biggest problem with DeAndre A. And it's just he seemed like he doesn't have that motor. Like he doesn't want to do that dirty work that I need my big man to do. So. Uh, it's real tough. Like I said, he definitely could get benched just because right now it's just what do you really bring to the team? What do you really bring to the table? Like it's nothing, it's, no, it's bro. yeah, it's like it's kind of pointless to have you out there right now. So I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he got benched, especially because his history with Monty, like they butted heads a little bit. So mm-hmm. um, I definitely wouldn't be surprised. It's funny too because he re- like when I watch him play, he reminds me of like Anthony Davis on his off days. Like when Anthony Davis doesn't have it going. But that's like DeAndre Aiden all the time. Right. Because right? when, when AD doesn't have it going, it's like he's not really hustling for rebounds either. He mm-hmm. still, like, blocks shots. He plays good defense. But, like, him with no motor is just DeAndre Aiden. And, like, that's sad because, like I said, you're the former number one overall pick. Like, people keep talking about this potential. Like, people have been talking about his potential for years. Like, I feel like. But we've seen point, flashes of it. Right? Like, yeah. that. That's, yeah. it's in the their run to the finals, right? Like, <clears throat> dominating like that was a thing for like, you know <laughs> spurt to that yeah. that playoff run um and he had some huge games for them even in the finals of that you know against milwaukee mm-hmm. um so it's like bro where did this player go like it felt like the progression just stopped and if anything you regressed up until this point like again you know the the, the shot die is not going to be there when you add a guy like kevin durant but it's the other aspects of your game just do not seem to having as much of an impact on the floor as they should again like you said being a former number one overall pick and at the end of the day like with what we've seen from you in the past like you are capable of doing it but you have like your team needs you in these moments because they're not going to get out of the series like without him stepping up or one of the big stepping up because again like i like i alluded to earlier right like 86 combined points from your star duo and you win by seven, like Denver took all of those punches. And if a couple of different things go their way down the stretch, this could be a three Oh series. Right. That that's really the problem. It's the fact that you like that 86 of my points was much needed. It wasn't like they needed every single one of those points to, right. sneak, to squeak out of there with a win. So it's tough. Cause it's like, I understand you add Kevin Durant to the mix. I understand some shot like shots are going to go his way. I understand you're going to get um significantly less opportunities to score the basketball. But it's like, I mean, like j- even if you just look at the box score, you obviously you got 47, you got 39 from KD, and no one else is even in double digits. You have no Chris Paul on the floor. It's like you would think you can get opportunities to score the basketball. So I don't know. That's just I don't know. It's, it's real interesting to me how he's just a non-factor offensively and defensively. Yeah, and this is, has been a problem that people have had with Phoenix as a whole, like, aside from Aiden alone, right? Like, the ball gets held up so much in D-Books and KD's hands, um, and even prior to KD getting there, like, just Aiden just doesn't see those kinds of touches. And mm-hmm. some of that is probably, like, that's a, you know, a concerted effort by, you know, their scheme, like, they don't see him getting close touches as something that's conducive to how they want their offense to run. And that's fair, I guess. I would disagree Um, because, again, I think the skill set is there for that to provide just a different dynamic to their offense. But, again, with no Chris Paul, it's like his presence gets diminished more and more. Um, So, yeah, like they're going to need him to step up or – I, mean, I, I it's wild to say like Jock Landale to step up even more, um, you know, for them to even get, they got like, even to get game four on their home floor, like they're in danger zone every single night. Um, because even when, again, your stars are combining for 86 points and their D book is having like historic playoff performances. Y'all are still only squeaking out wins against this Nuggets team at mm-hmm. home. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, if, if this game was in Denver, I don't think they won this game. No, probably not. But then that's why at this point you know, it looks like they're probably going to lose in five because it's you. T- it takes this much of a great game from Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, even though he didn't have a an efficient night, um, he still gave you thirty nine points. Yeah. Like 
just to only win by seven at home is just it, it's insane. That's why it's the Suns team just isn't it isn't a contender. It looks like right now.